Pythagoras is there. So, right angle triangles. What does it mean to solve a right angle triangle? Sides. So, yeah. Okay. Now, what I guess we should do, because you've got this title page on the front of your booklet. Pythagoras is there. Let's write down on the front what Pythagoras claimed as his own theorem. Yes. We should have that comma. Pythagoras and Pythagoras's theorem. Okay. Um, famous mathematician. Um, we do know, though, that Pythagoras' theorem was used long before Pythagoras uh, published it. Because back in the day, like Pythagoras would have just been someone with a lot of money that could claim things as his own. Now, it might be that he proved it mathematically rather than actually discovered it. But um, do you remember what Pythagoras? Pythagoras' theorem was, is? No? Right. Pythagoras published that if and only if you have a right angle triangle, let me uh, make it a bit smaller. All right. Let's. Um, I've covered things over, that's what I'm saying. All right, let's just do it. So, we've got a right angle triangle. How, what makes a right angle triangle? The 90 degree. So, there is a 90 degree angle. Okay. The other, other angles are not important, but there must be a right angle in there. There must be a 90 degree. Now, what Pythagoras published what Egyptians knew was if you draw a square okay on a very good square if you draw a square on the two shorter sides okay of the triangle so that's why I was going to try and make it a bit smaller maybe if you could make it so it fits okay so if I call, if, let's say for instance, this side is A and this side is B, the area of this square will be, well, if that's B, this is also B. So how do we work out the area of the square? Area is just this square would be B times B. What would the area of this square be? A times F. Okay. What's the shorter way of writing B times B? B times B squared, B to the power of two, and A times A is A squared. So you might think, well, what's special about that? Well, once we've done those two, if we then find a square, if we draw a square on the big side, right? Is that even a square? It doesn't matter. Anyway. The area of this large square is equal to the sum of the areas of the two smaller squares. Yeah. 
Rubbish. Well, Say it again. Yeah. Two bigger sides. There's only three sides. Pythagoras found out what well, he no, he didn't find out. He published it. That all right, let's call this area A. Okay. This one I'm going to call area B, and this one I'm going to call area C. So area A plus area B put there is equal to area C. All right. So Pythagoras' theorem is actually directly about the triangle. It's about the areas of squares that you draw on the sides of the triangle. And that's why a lot of people kind of forget and that leads to mistakes. Because they, they forget that. Do I need to pause for drawing this? Yeah. We said it's worked out by A squared. A is the length of the square that just happens to be the side of the triangle as well. Yeah. So area A can be represented as A times A or A squared. Did you go up in the And then um, B squared, well, B is the side of the triangle. So that's that one. So the side B, the area of the square, which is what I'm interested in, is B squared. And obviously C being the length of the triangle and relates to C squared, the area. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and that is what we recognize as Pythagoras' theorem. Is this a triangle that all sides are equal? Yes, what's it called? But is it a right angle triangle? No. Yes, but you wouldn't use this. We would not use Pythagoras' theorem for anything other than right angle triangles. I think it's the best that's ever explained to me. I don't understand it. What's the problem with high school? But I don't understand I that. think that, like I was saying earlier, the, the big problem is to not focus enough on back areas of the squares. And that makes um, makes it make sense. So when I'm doing Pythagoras' theorem, start with what I do is I say I have to remember very clearly something. All right, and the thing that was is not to be forgotten um, is that Pythagoras' theorem is a small square plus a, bit, a bigger square, maybe, they might be two the same size, and that equals the big one. So those two equal that one. Do we have to do that the um, squares? Right, so what I'm giving you here is a lot of people make the same mistake with Pythagoras' theorem, especially when they only just consider the numbers. They get, they forget that well, actually, the common mistake here would be to go, well, I've been given two numbers and I need the third. I would just put the two numbers into A and B, all right? And that's not the case. So if I show you this now, so for instance, which side is the smaller square, Martin? Okay, so I'm going to say this is this one. So that's going to be an 8 by 8 square. So the area is? Six, four. Oh, um, yeah. Where's the smaller, the next smaller square? The what? See, that's the mistake, isn't it? 
Which one's the biggest square on this triangle going to be? Six. No. This is the longest side by a long way, isn't it? So that's going to be the biggest square. So this is why I say if I put 16 by 16 there, what's the area of a 16 by 16 square? 256 square units. Not divide it, subtract. Okay. Subtract. Subtract. Because now we're thinking, right, this square contains both of those. So if I do this square, subtract that square, I get this one. Okay. So we're going to do 256, subtract 64, and we get the answer. How much? 192. 192. So I'm going to put that number in here. Now that's the area of the square, but I actually want to know the length here. How do I work that out? Well, this length here is the same as that length on that square. So how can I use that number to work out that line? Well, it would be something times something. I'm going to call that something B. Let's do B. So I'm going to say it's B squared equals 192. So how do you work out what B is? Um, if B squared is 192. How do we do it? You know how? It's one, so I think it's 192 divided by something. Divided by something. Well, it's kind of like doing a division, but it's not as simple because we don't know what to divide by. But we do know that b times b is 192 b squared. You don't remember the opposite of squaring is the square root of 192. And it says, give your answer correct to two decimal places. So what's the answer to three decimal places first? Oh. Yeah, you're going to need a calculator. Yeah, 13, 14, 8, 5, 6. Okay, now the reason why I've written it to three decimal places is because then I round to two decimal places and whoever's checking my work, can see that I at least got the first bit right, and if I round incorrectly, the benefit is still there. You know, I've done everything else right. So we round that to two decimal places, it would be 13 point six. No, six. Six. Okay. 13 point. So that would be this side would be 13.86 centimeters now. To finish this off, I've got to just do a little mental check. Does that make sense? Does it look right with that triangle? And why would be your reason there? And so what? Because I lived to be 60. Yeah. It's roughly in the same proportions, isn't it? If it was like 200 and something, completely wrong. If it's like 1.3 or something, completely wrong. If it's more than 16, it's wrong. So I don't know that I've definitely done it right, but that number seems to be reasonable. Yeah. So that might give me the confidence just to move on. All right, how'd you feel? Okay. The only change I'm going to make to how I laid out the first one is I'm actually going to write out Pythagoras' theorem this time to get used to it. 
So I'm going to write Pythagoras' theorem. It's a right angle triangle. Okay, so I know that's right angles. That that's that's one piece of information. So I I know I'm going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, which sides are a, b, and c? Um, or does it matter? C c is the biggest. C is the biggest. Good. That's the decision. Here. So I'm going to do my big square and my two smaller ones. Okay, and I'm going to say this one plus this one equals. So obviously, eventually you'll move away from writing these squares out and just use a squared plus b squared and c squared. But a in this case, well, which one do you want to be a? Okay, the so one point seven. B is going to be three point two. And C is the one we want to know this time. So this question will be a little bit easier. Okay. What's the area of that square? Though? It's going to be A squared. So A squared equals 2.89. B squared equals... 7.2? 7. 7.2, 7. yeah. 2.4. 2.4, okay. And this is the one, which is c squared, that I want to know what it is. So we're going to do 2.89 plus, there's no subtraction needed this time, we've got it way away. What does that equal? 13. Okay, so that's going to go there, so that's 13, now again, that's the area of the square, so what's my final step? All right, c squared equals 13.13. But it says decreasing. Not done it yet. Not finished. <laughs> That's to work out. So how do I work out C? Square root. Square root. Yeah. So C is the square root of one thirteen point one three. And what is that? So say that again. Three point six. Carry on. Two. Three. Three. Is that it? Oh, five. Five. Three. Three. Four. Okay, we'll stop there. Um, as was just said, we actually need this time three significant figures. Do you know what significant figures are, rather than decimal places? Three six two. It's, it's the three most valuable ones. Yeah, so in this case, we start on the left-hand side. So the first most significant is the three. The next is the six. The next is the two. But do we round up? No. So 3.62 would be our answer. As we do our little check, I always do this, by the way. I'm going to write C equals... 3.62, and I just asked myself, does that make sense? It should be the longest one, it is. It should be in the same ballpark as those two other numbers. It won't be massively much bigger, or, and it definitely won't be smaller. So I think we're all right, aren't we? We're right. So six point eight squared is thirty nine point six nine. Okay. Um, which one's A? Which one's B? Or doesn't it matter? 
that A and B don't matter because you just have to add them together. So adding is not which way round. So actually, I'm going to say for me, just A is this one, B is that one. It's getting C correct, it's the right thing. So if this is 3.73, I've got 3.7 squared. Okay. I'm going to stop there because the bell's gone, but you guys have finished that one.